Aaron, how you doing, family? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, guys, so as, as promised, as we were talking about, um, you heard, you've heard my cousins, they were on here about three or four weeks ago. What's going on, Michael? Um, how they use Deal Machine, and um, they are, are able to do a lot of different things with it in their own local market, but also um, in virtual markets as well. And so uh, since that time, I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, I, I want to be able to explain this and really do a deep dive in it. But I was like, who's better to explain it uh, uh, than the person who actually put it, it, put it together and created it? Um, so definitely wanted to reach out to uh, the man uh, who is uh, out there, you know, that's just helping a lot of people out. Um, this, this app is something that is almost a, it's almost a must have, really. It really makes your life a lot easier. Um, it allows you to find um, and locate owners so much smoother. But it's just one of those things where, you know, if you, once you have it, it's, you kind of get used to it and you don't want to let it go. So I'll give you a quick little introduction uh, uh, to this guy. He's the CEO of Deal Machine. Um, like I said, this app is phenomenal, man. It uh, helps individuals find and locate um, property owners. Um, and it's really ingenious, right? Because this is the kind of how, how it works. How you doing, Brenda? This is kind of how it works. It's one of those things where um, if you get a postcard in the mail and it's just a blank postcard or a yellow letter or something very just uh, plain, you're just going to toss it just like every other postcard that you get. Right. It's the same reason what I was doing before I was writing handwritten letters, but it was taking me forever, right? Because I knew I would get the attention. So now they've devised this thing where you can actually go to the property, take a quick little picture, and it puts the picture on the postcard. So it's a phenomenal, phenomenal tool, man. And it's helping a lot of individuals out. And without further ado, I want to bring the man, the myth, the legend, the person who created this, uh, Mr. David Letko. David, can you hear me? Can we take you yeah. off mute here? Perfect. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here with us and just uh, being able to uh, help us understand how we can utilize this tool better um, in our day-to-day -day business. Absolutely. I'm just going to jump right in if that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. Do I need to make you the host in order to do that? Yeah, let me share my screen. I think I've got that option. Okay, perfect. Perfect. There you go. You guys can see this okay? Absolutely. Cool. So we're going to have some fun. I've put together these slides specifically for you guys to help give you a clear picture on how to add your first deal or an extra deal per month to your real estate businesses. So if you guys have your email open, go ahead and close that out. Put your phone on do not disturb. Get out your journal if you have one because you're going to want to take some notes and you're going to be able to learn a few things from this that you can implement. Got it. As Tommy said, my name's David and I've been working on Deal Machine for about three years now. And I wanted to take a quick second and see, is there anybody here on the call that's currently using Deal Machine? You can put it, just go ahead and put it in the chat. So, uh, cause I don't know if you can see everybody's screen when you're saving it. All right, so I have yes, I got uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. We got three yeses so far, four yeses. Yep, five, okay. Awesome, hey guys, good to meet you. Perfect. So, I wanted to show this right up front because it's really special that Tommy had, had um, the Polites come talk to you guys a few weeks earlier. And the last time I checked in with them a few months ago, they had made half a million dollars in wholesaling fees, single wholesale deals that were $100,000 range. And then they've also bought a lot of rentals where they were able to say, we earned this much equity in this deal that we found with Deal Machine. And so, you know, at that time, this was in 2018, they had 13 active deal finders across four different states. And I would like to tell you guys that because it's always helpful for me to know, even if your business isn't there yet, what's around the corner for you and what's possible for you. I'm gonna start by uh, asking Tommy why he drives for dollars. He just did already explain that though, because he likes the postcard to have a really personalized photo on it so it doesn't get thrown away. And Tommy, is there anything else you'd add to that? Why do I like driving for dollars specifically? Yeah. Um, I like driving for dollars. It's my strategy. Um, number one, it was where I got my first deal. So most people, when they get their first deal, that's kind of like the strategy that they go for. Yeah. Uh, 
But for me, um, like I was explaining to someone, I'm a professional driving for dollars. Here. Um, I don't just look for the obvious abandoned one. I like to look for the ones that are questionable. And so when I find something like that, the, uh, and especially using a tool like this, the owner's never seen it before. So it's, you know, it really catches their, their attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that's really smart to do the ones that are questionable because the ones that are completely abandoned and vacant or vacant or abandoned, they may already be on a list that people can download because they've been that way for so long. Yeah. So hello again, my name is David and I wanted to explain kind of how I even came about making the deal machine app because it's only been around for a little over two years. And that's about as long as I've been a real estate investor too. And I, I started out by reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and playing the cash flow game. Hmm. And I knew my strategy that I wanted to do was in that cash flow game, you kind of earn your way out of the rat race by you know, using any money that you have and using it in investments. And eventually those investments can make you enough money that cover all of your living expenses. So I spent most of my 20s, I'm 29 now, just trying to save as much as possible and living off of as little as possible. And this game was my mission. I was like, I've got to, I got to escape this rat race. Yeah. And I, I also wanted to, I loved, you know, been lucky to go on a few different traveling trips. Um, that's South Korea on the left. When I visited my cousin who was uh, flying in the air force there. And I noticed Tommy, you and um, at least one other person, uh, you know, served or yeah. serve in the armed forces. So have a lot of respect for the sacrifices that you all make and wanted to say thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the middle one's Mount Rainier. Actually, the last two are. I, just, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what I wanted to have some more freedom to do. So I did start out around 2015 driving for dollars. And this was one particular house that I found. And I drove by four weeks later and I noticed that some renovations had started. So I looked up on the county record and sure enough, somebody bought it in the last three weeks. And boy, I was so frustrated because I looked down at my passenger seat and there is this you know, piece of paper with all these addresses. I also had photos of the homes on my phone, but I hadn't followed up yet. So I was struggling with my lack of follow through. And so what I'm about to show you is basically how I battled that myself. Um, continuing on that story, I got very motivated and I started looking up all those owners that very same day. And our website's pretty outdated, so it was a very time consuming process. I actually had to download this PDF for every property and it took me, you know, I had about 40 properties at the time and it took me like three episodes of Friends while I was doing this to get through that. And uh, the next thing I wanted to do was get a really high response rate on my mail because you know I only have 40 properties, so I need a high response rate. And I wanted to include the picture, that's why I took it with my smartphone. Um, I didn't have enough mailers to use a bulk mail service, especially one that would put my picture on it. So I was printing them at home. And that's when I realized this is really time consuming, similar to handwriting all those letters that you mentioned, Tommy. Yeah. And I was like, I need to spend my time going out and looking for more deals. I need to spend my time driving. You know, anybody can do this, um, you know, printing the letter and doing the, like the task of looking up the owner. And so that's when I, I made the deal machine app. My, luckily my full-time job was actually a software developer. And so, I made this app. It didn't look as good as it does now, but it did the very basics for me. When I would see a property, I would take a photo of it right there in the app and then it would actually fill out the address for me. So I didn't have to write it on a piece of paper. And then it would instantly tell me who the owner was. And then the final step was sending a piece of mail. And now it does some other things such as give me the phone number and the email of the owner if I want to just call them. But this was the huge breakthrough for me. Even before the app looked good, I was like, the ability to take care of this instantly will actually prevent me, it'll, it'll solve my lack of follow through issue that I had. So 
we kind of slowly gained momentum. I, I did put that on the app store in 2016. I had no idea that this could actually be a business, but I had a couple of friends who asked. So I put it on the app store and then last year we had 30,000 downloads. I haven't checked again this year, but I have a feeling it's a lot more. And then some of the biggest success stories were the polites where they made half a million dollars, you know, in six months. And so after all those people use the app and myself included have gotten a few deals, which I'll tell you about, we boiled down all the success stories to this distressed formula framework, which is something that you're going to want to take notes on. I will tell you the, the points that are really important as we're going through the slides. Okay. So the very first house I did was a jaw dropping like $5,000 house. <laughs> and this is what it looked like after my renovations were about 75% all the way through. But the important part of this formula, you'll start to see this framework, you'll start to see as I walk you through the dates. Um, so this was back in August, 2017. I took a picture of the house. That's what it used to look like. And then had the owner's name, address, and phone number. I sent him a piece of mail. In that red box, the repeat mail is every 21 days. So the first thing I want to write, want you to write down is repeat your marketing. So he got his second postcard and this is what it looked like. The, the app at the time generated this postcard with the, the, the house and it said, I'm interested in purchasing it. I can close quickly. Please call me if you're interested. So he got that second postcard. It went out automatically without me thinking about it. That would have been another issue with my lack of follow through um, had I not been using the app, but it does take care of that repeat mail for you. And then he did end up calling me in November. And so I toured his house and uh, I'm going to, I ended up calculating, uh, you know, the offer price based on list source data for the area, calculating the average, you know, home price um, that went over there. We closed February 1st. He actually needed uh, several months time to get qualified to move into this new housing complex. Um, but he ended up calling me because he had surgery and he couldn't cut the grass anymore. And so I let, we came up with a closing date in the future. So he could get approved to live in that housing complex. Hmm. So this is the other thing I want you to write down is, uh, you know, he called me after the fourth postcard. So a lot of times, a lot of times we'll send out a piece of mail and we'll think, dang, I just didn't get any calls back. And then we'll move on to the next marketing method. But the problem is um, it takes time. You know, his house looked run down for a very long time before I found it. So now it's just a matter of numbers and timing for him to have received my fourth postcard at the very moment after he had surgery and realized he's got to move finally. He lived there for 40 years. So the other thing that I wanted to highlight was it is the first thing you wrote down was repeat your marketing. And the second thing I want you to write down is when you're driving for dollars, aim for having at least 200 properties repeating mail that you are actively marketing to you. because the whole distress formula framework that I was telling you about is basically 200 properties. This is what you should definitely write down 200 properties times three mailers each equals one deal at least. So at a minimum, if you're going to drive for dollars, what we've seen is you should have that as your goal at the very least. Sometimes it takes more, but I want you guys to have like a really attainable goal to work towards and to measure against to make sure that you're at least doing the, the bare minimum of what you should expect it to take to get a deal. Gotcha. That's good stuff. And I think that's pretty much right on par with, uh, uh, Crystal and, De and Diedrich said as well. I see some chats. I'm going to take a moment and just read those real quick. Can you Corey said he can't hear you. Okay. Might be an issue with Corey's sound. I can hear everybody. All right. So I wanted to jump back in. This is that formula written out. Um, at the time, I had 225 properties in there when he called me. 
And then I ended up getting my second deal, which was this house uh, that we bought for $44,000. And we just finished the refinance actually. So we did the renovation, keeping it as a rental property and then got it to refinance for $160,000. So we created um, about $50,000 in equity on this property. Wow. Yeah. So at that time I had 204 properties in there. This isn't always going to work out super nicely like this, but the distress formula remember was like every 200 properties I'm sending mail three times each at least to all the owners is when you're going to get a deal. So this actually worked out really well with those numbers and a lot of our success stories kind of are like this. And that's why we came up with this framework to help everybody, especially if you're just getting started. So yeah, the, the, the third thing I'd like you to write down is when you're going to try a marketing method, plan your marketing in advance. The worst thing is, is if, if you're, you know, kind of halfway through, it's very easy to feel like, Oh, this isn't working. And then you stop. But as a lot of folks will tell you that the, uh, the consistency is key. And the, the way to battle that is to plan out what you're going to do ahead of time. Now, uh, I wanted to, to kind of say what types of properties that I look for. And so Tommy said he likes the ones that are kind of in between, not just like totally vacant down to the studs or, you know, um, totally trash. Obviously nobody's living there, but I, I actually like the ones that are kind of in between, like Tommy said, because a lot of times you'll get a bigger, a wholesale spread on that as well because that property is worth something, you know, it's not completely run down to the ground. So, um, both of these, I noticed something wrong with it and I say decent and say I bought it for four grand. So let me explain that. I mean, it was just knowledge of the area. It now makes over $2,000 a month on Airbnb, thankfully, after I put 60,000 into it. Um, but the banks wouldn't give me a a refinance because the banks were like, there's no comps. But it was just not my knowledge of the area. I knew this could be a great Airbnb property. And so um, that's why I just knew this property was going to work. Um, some indicators I look for are that stuff full mailbox, broken or boarded up windows, um, a tarp. This one had a tarp on the roof. Um, my yellow one, the second one had falling off gutters. And just, you know, Max Maxwell, if you guys follow him, he always says you want to find the rough in the diamond neighborhoods. So instead of just looking in a neighborhood where all the houses are in really bad shape, if you find a neighborhood that's pretty good and then target those properties that look like the worst ones on the street, great strategy. If you guys are in an area where there's snow that's that's fallen, but no tire tracks or footprints on the driveway, great property to add. Somebody's not there. And tall grass is another one, another obvious one. You don't have to remember all these actually. I don't want to make you write these down because, well, if you're using the app, there's this property tag section that actually has every single thing that you could look for. So it makes it very easy to remember and to say, does this house qualify for one of these things I want to look for? It's right in the app. On those two deals, I spent about eight hours driving and $1,400 to get two deals. That does not include the time it took to make the app. Just wanted to be clear, that was just the driving driving around and the, the money spent sending mail through the app. So um, if you're gonna break down the numbers again with that distressed formula, plan for spending $600 to $1,000 to get one deal. Okay, so this is just reiterating the distress formula again. And I think I've driven that home a lot. So I wanted to kind of move on now and talk about the mail, show you some success stories, and then talk about what happens after you do your first deal. You know, how can you better use your time and scale, have other people looking for these drivers for you? Do you guys want me to say that? Let me know in the chat. Yeah, for sure. Well. I can say, yeah, big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sweet. Michael, Jordan, Keith. Yes. All right. Let me keep going then. So I just checked. Um, there's been almost a million postcards sent since we started. 
And these are going to the right person because it doesn't send it to the house. It actually goes to the owner of the house. Okay. And then it's going to have a picture of the property they own. So if they're an absentee owner, they may not even know their house looks terrible. There was a recent scandal with Ocean Point Properties in Indianapolis where I live, which was a turnkey company that took people's money from California and other out of state places. They said they're fixing up the properties and putting a tenant in the property. And these, these owners never come to Indianapolis to see this property they own, but it started to come out that these properties weren't renovated. So what, you know, there's a lot of cases where the owner may not even know their property looks that bad. And so by having that photo on there, you're also educating them and bringing that to their attention. Wow. I'm going to just um, go through these very quickly. Um, these are kind of other examples of like how this distress formulas work. So this guy's name is Nigel. A lot of times when we think of driving for dollars, we think about, oh, I'm going to dedicate an hour tonight and do that, which is great. But Nigel actually worked for one of these big wholesaling companies called Simple Wholesaling here in Indianapolis. And his job was a property manager. So he would go to the properties they own and rented. And when he was already in those neighborhoods, he would just add these properties with the app. And so he ended up getting four deals. I mean, they did close four deals out of this thing in three months. And it wasn't even his job to find properties, which I thought was a great example because in your life, like, you know, you go to the store all the time and, or you go you know, to work. And when you see a house, you're going 40 miles per hour. You think, oh, I'm going to go back to that when I, on my way home, you know, and then on your way home, what happens? Something happens, the kids spill something or right. traffic. Yeah, so life. life happens. So the, the um, you know, the, I want you guys to be able to, to now, now know, like you can follow up with them, even in those instances where you don't have a lot of time. So this, this was another breakdown of about 400 deals in there um, and about four deals done, which is actually better than typical, but cool to share. Uh, again, this is better than typical. Uh, Rissa was in Arkansas. That last guy was in Texas. Um, so uh, these are working in different parts of the country. Um, but this was Rissa's very first deal with this app. Um, and so great success story at 40 added. Um, Heath, again, I feel, like, I feel like the better likelihood is when you're doing these random deals. Because when we go driving for dollars, a lot of the times it – you know, you, there are neighborhoods that other people would think about driving, but if you are in a random place that you weren't specifically trying to drive for dollars for, it's a house that, you know, you don't have and a lot of other people probably don't have. So Heath was taking different routes to work every day and he found these random homes and ended up doing four deals because they were, uh, he found one guy who had four houses he wanted to unload. And that's, that's exactly what I tell everybody to do too, is take different routes going to work, from work, to the store. Just take, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes to do that. Yeah. I think it's always good to target neighborhoods and set aside time to do that. But from my experience, these ones you find randomly, those are the gold. Those are the best ones. Yeah. Um, Damien, he had his very first deal. He was in uh, Pennsylvania area. And I thought it was so cool. He said, the house that he showed me looked perfect condition. I was like, how the heck did you even know to add that to your app? And he yeah. said that it didn't have blinds so you could see right through the house. And that's how I knew nobody was in there. Yeah. And then Alberto is always fun to talk about because he's like, I put my keys on my boss's desk and I said, I'm out. <laughs> so uh, he, he did that after he made uh, seven deals. Um, and again, it, it's, these, this is a better than the, the average, I would say it's very least 200 properties, three pieces of mail each at the least um, is what you should plan for. Okay, so um, you guys drive every single day and I wanna give you guys a special, uh, you know, like bonus if you guys wanna try out the app because we actually have a 14 day free trial and we set up this, this code E2E cash so that you guys can get 20 extra dollars right away to send mail um, to the homes. So I'm going to pause, let you guys do that.
and then I'll finish up um, after a minute or two. Thank you so much for that. That's awesome. So, so there, they can go ahead and download the app right now um, and use the ETE cash, which I, again, appreciate that. Um, and they're going to be able to get $20 to go towards postcards uh, to send out. Is that how that works? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to allow you guys to send 20 postcards, um, no cost. So you could even get your first deal in those. So you got 14 days for free, right? 14 days free and 20 postcards. You guys, there's no reason not to uh, take advantage of that. You know, 14 days free, test it out, see what it looks like. And you got $20 to, to, to play with, to send out. Yeah, if you guys already have the app, you can still get the $20 of credit. You just go to the settings and go to enter promo and you guys will still be able to get that. Cool, cool. And then I see Lenny, Lenny843 was saying, are these absentee homes? And that's a really good question because a lot of times we target the absentee owners because they're very motivated. My, my deals, the first few that I did were actually owner occupied. So I wanted to also kind of have you guys write that down is if you're driving for dollars and you see a rundown house, that is enough motivation right there. They don't have to be absentee owned to send, to make it worth sending mail. Mm. Um, in my particular case, the more, more recent one, that yellow house that we bought for $44,000, that gutter was falling off. There was some water damage in the front of the roof, I could tell. And <clears throat> the, I think it was like seven months went by while I was still repeating mail before I got a call. And it was owner occupied, but the son called me. He's like, my parents passed away and I have to sell the estate, which has debts. I need to sell these debts in the estate right away. And so he was like, I need to close in two weeks. And so that was an owner occupied home by the data. And then it was in really bad shape. Ultimately the, uh, the owners ended up passing away and the son had to sell it. Courtney is saying it can't be used with a new account. But let me give you a hack. Um, just go ahead to the help and support part of the app and say, David told me to give, uh, David told me to give 20 deal credits to me for being on the E2E presentation. And I promise you, we will get that first thing in the morning, if not tonight. So everybody's welcome to do that. That's on the call. Just go in the app, help and support, and you can chat us. Um, that question or any question, but um, just let them know and I'll let my team know to give that to you. All right, see, you go straight to the person right there. Hold on real quick, let me, before you say anything, let me just mute everybody because I guess some people are off mute and let me just okay. put everybody on mute and then I'll unmute you again. Uh, muted, continue, all right. And you are back live. Okay, great. All right, so I've got one last segment for you guys, and I think it's gonna be really helpful. If you already know what Deal Machine is, let me give you guys a brief overview of what we changed last year. Um, so we, we really do focus a lot on the data accuracy, and we keep track of if we can't find the owner for some reason. So we were able to bump that up from 93 to 96% of properties added we can find the owner for successfully. We came out with these sequential mail campaigns. So it lets you create a more sophisticated and personalized message when you can line up different postcards to go out in sequence. You know, so the first one can say something different than the second one. Mm. Is that something that is that is automatically done or is that something we have to do on the back end of that? Yeah, so um, we, you set them up. So we do have six postcard designs you can choose from when you're making mail templates. And that's, you know, just honestly, you don't need to get into mail campaigns. If you haven't done a first deal yet, I would recommend not messing with it because you don't need it. But when you're scaling, it is really beneficial to have more of these custom sequences because you're doing such high volume. And so that allows you to get more sophisticated. Perfect. The, um, the, we do have six different postcard designs and you can change all the colors and all the text. We do provide those just default so that way you can just start sending right away. But then having the six allows you to stand out. 
Um, as we've had more people start to use the app, that's been something that we wanted to make sure it was still possible for you to do is stand out. Um, we do have that first class mail tracking. So you can even get a push notification that says your mail is expected to arrive today. Get ready in case your phone rings. And uh, yeah, the, the last three, probably not as important to mention. Um, but this year we've already knocked out some stuff. So we got pin drop to add a property. That's really fast to add properties. And we've got deal statuses. So you can keep track of if somebody calls you back, you can mark that as a status in that deal. So you can kind of track the status all the way from a new deal to uh, actually closing the deal. So it helps you with some of those steps. So like a CRM, a, a kind of a, a lighter version of a CRM, correct? Yeah, it's, yeah. So we, it's a light CRM feature. We're not a standalone CRM, but if you don't have a CRM, this can be a really, really helpful way for um, you to keep track of these deals. The number one thing people are asking for is route tracking to see where you've previously driven. So that's the next thing that's going to come. Wow, that would be huge. The, uh, we're, we're adding an overlay so that you can see which homes are absentee owned versus owner occupied before you add them. So currently right now you can see that once you add them, um, but you'll be able to see that uh, before you even add a property. And then, um, yeah, like I said, we did, we, were, we worked on that data accuracy, kind of included that in this list too. We're going to let you bulk upload addresses. So I know Max Maxwell did a recent video where he says he actually gets the vacant list from his, from the postal service. And then he pre uploads those into a different app. So you can see all those pins and he goes to certain areas where there's a lot of vacancies. And so we're going to um, incorporate that. So you can do drive a deal machine app. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's definitely a, 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 a big tool because that right there can save so much time. It's something that exactly, exactly what you're talking about is, is what you do is you just go to Google Maps. You have to do it from a PC, but um, you can do that exact same thing and it makes things so much easier when you can go straight to a, a pinpoint. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've got coming. And then I want to talk about leveraging your time. Because one of the team members drive for you within the app and you can see which properties were added by which person. So a great way to do that when you're just starting out is like find somebody like your mom or a family member or a friend who's always got your back <clears> and say, hey, I'm looking for these types of properties. And if you see one while you're driving, will you send it to me? And then when they say yes, then you can just add them to your team so they can actually just take a photo of it with Deal Machine and it goes right into your account. Once you, once you do a few deals, you have money to pay somebody. We suggest doing this hourly. The Polites actually do have a reward system where they'll give 500 bucks or a thousand bucks per person that actually finds the deal that they close. So that has worked at scale too. And um, those are a few different ways um, that you can add different team members. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I mean, key, keys to scaling are keep using that math and the distressed property framework that I share with you guys and think about how many people on your team will it take to add 200 properties per week or month. However, many deals you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. A big key is just, you know, find somebody to help you drive. We call those deal finders. And then the polites talked about having a specific person on their team to actually manage it because <clears throat> deal finders, they can't spend your money. So they can't send mail. You're going to have to go in and decide which properties to submit to because you don't want your mail going to the wrong types of properties because that's wasting money. So think about your process to evaluate. We actually make it really easy because again, we have those tags. So the, the tags are all things that would qualify a property like the mailbox is stuffed full or the grass is tall. So that can be a training tool for your deal finders and say, Hey, make sure when you're adding a property, it's got to meet one of these tags and they're already pre-populated. Just require them to use a tag. And then the commitment to sending mail is just along the same lines of plan out your marketing. If you know you're, if you're wanting to get a deal, plan out sending 
you know, 600 pieces because it's 200 properties times three each. So that's what I mean by that, um, that bullet point there. So again, once you get, once you get a deal or two under your belt, at least with the driving for dollars method and you feel comfortable with that, then you can recruit deal finders in a few different places. And so the polites, this is an example from their page on the right. This is somebody else on the left. Um, but this is how they are gaining deal finders through social media. They're actually making a post. We recommend as well for like an hourly person, you could pay 12 to $15. And then instead of them driving Uber, they can just drive for you. And I've got a job posting that you guys can just grab um, as well. This is a screenshot of it. Craigslist works too, but I found a lot of times on Craigslist, they're not people who want to stick around for a long time. They seem to be looking more for a quick gig. And so I really think if you're going to train them, you want somebody that's going to stick around for a while, but it has worked for some people. Uh, when you're really just recruiting a lot of people, onboarding them to the app is, is something you can make easier with this funnel page. So you direct them to this funnel page, they sign up, learn about your company on this page. It's all done for you by Deal Machine. And then it brings them right into the app with instructions. They actually get a special video from me explaining what types of properties to add. So we kind of lift that burden off you guys. Uh, and then Plights, we're obviously very successful. Um, we've got some big teams using this. And so this is another group that was already doing a million a year in wholesaling fees, and they still chose to invest in, in a driving for dollars team. And so that was, um, I think, something really important because, I mean, up until recently, it wasn't really scalable for a big team. Um, but now that it is, it can be very profitable. Um, so again, we do, we do some of the heavy lifting on the onboarding and training for you guys. Um, and if there's any additional tweaks to that basic stuff, like, okay, if I were to summarize any additional things you might want to do is figure out what zip codes in your local market you want people to focus in. Cause that's one thing we don't include in the videos because it's different for every market. So one thing you want to communicate with your deal finders is where exactly you want them to drive. Um, Tommy, do you have any tips for finding those right zip codes in those areas? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I love using either the either Zillow or I'm a realtor, so I have access to the MLS. So either one of those, I'll typically um, find houses that are uh, were on the market and didn't sell for less than 50 um, or less than 70, depending on what side of the city I'm on. Um, and if they were on the market and the listing expired, then that's obviously a house for me, but there's probably other houses in that particular neighborhood as well. Yeah. There is a uh, really cool video that I've, I've watched recently on YouTube from Max Maxwell, and it shows how he uses list source to figure out where most of the cash transactions were in that city in the last yeah. year. Yeah, we actually have uh, a, a class on a course on that in our course, or a, um, a whole uh, presentation on how to do that. Awesome. Yeah. So that that's a definitely good way to decide where to drive as well. And then paying those deal finders are these are the structures so you can think about. Um, the first person you shouldn't even you shouldn't even pay him up front. You want it to be a friend or a family member who knows you and wants to help you that you can pay once you close a deal, like 500 bucks or a thousand bucks once you close a deal. Um, and you know, they're not going anywhere. Um, if you do this with a Craigslist person, they'll probably get skeptical and like leave because you're not going to pay them for several weeks, right? Because you probably won't close a deal immediately. So the first type of person you want to add for deal finder is that friend. And then once you're ready to have somebody consistently, these are different structures that we see. Okay. Approval deal, 10% of profit deal, and that's nice, good. And then I like to um, pay via Venmo. Uh, there's different ways, uh, but I, I actually struggled whenever I was looking for somebody on Indeed 
all these people were like, yes, I want to do it. Yes, I want to do it. And I set up these interviews and then nobody showed up. And so now the way I recruit is I create a hoop for them to jump through before I ever spend any of my personal time training them or meeting them for an interview. And so the way that looks like is I say, here's the app. I need you to add a hundred properties in the next week and I'll pay you a hundred dollars once you do it. And then after that, we'll see if you like doing it. And if you do, then we can meet for an interview. And so that works really quickly because it weeds out all these people who just are going to waste your time anyway. So that's my best tip is when, if you're going to recruit for somebody like that, um, to approach it that way by creating a hoop for them to jump through that they're going to have to do for their job. And so this is a screenshot of my Venmo. Um, Courtney is my driver. And so I have her tell me how many hours she drove and how many properties she added. So this is what she did in her description. And I can verify that in the deal machine app as well. Um, but it just kind of keeps things nice because she's summarizing what she did. I can go back and verify. And then I had a conversation with her. I said 9.3 properties per hour. Uh, I really want you to aim for 10 to 15. And so she says, we'll do. When I actually got her to do that first hundred properties, we did the interview and then I formalized the relationship. Um, I got scared because I have this uh, weird friend and he's like, got hit by a pizza delivery guy and he ended up suing the pizza company for this driver's mistake. And I was like, dude, that's crazy. I would have never done that. Also, I don't want that to happen to me if I'm hiring a driver to look for real estate deals. So I had my lawyer create this driver contract that really like limits your liability and you guys can grab it. Um, I'm going to give you a link at the end of this presentation, but here it is right now um, that you can use for your own drivers. If you're hiring somebody to drive for you. That's awesome, man. That's not the yeah. stuff that you don't think about. Well, yeah. And it's kind of a pain. It's like the last thing you should be thinking about when you're trying to, get your business off the ground, you know? So it was just like one of those things that I was like, I want to have this made for me and I want it to be made in a way that other people can use it too. That's great. So again, I mean, this is that code that I didn't mention before. This is the pricing of the app. It is $49 a month for using the technology and the postcards are 99 cents each. They're that full color on the front and back. And again, it's about 600 to $2,000 um, that you would expect to spend to get a deal this way using the app. <clears throat> this is my contact info. And if you want any, if you want to copy these slides, you can grab that by just pointing your phone's camera at this QR code. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go through this and answer some questions. So Aaron says, how do we get access to the driver contract? And I'm posting the link in the chat. It's also on these slides. And this is also, this also will be recorded and it'll be up there as soon as Zoom cooperates with me. <laughs> That's cool. CJ says cool QR code. <laughs> um, Dexter says, I have a list of vacant and absentee property. Should I just send out the mail to them or should I go back and take a picture and put it in the app? I'm trying to find out what gets better results. And I think that's the question I'm gonna kind of ask Tommy. Or yeah, I, guys, the, the thing that, that makes this work is the fact that it stands out. It doesn't look like another postcard, um, especially, especially if this is like a Dexter, if you're, if you're on your list, if you can picture back to that, those properties that you've gotten um, and they look like the typical abandoned property, I guarantee you they're getting, they're getting postcarded to death, right? So what's going to make yours stand out is that photo on the front. Okay, so if it was me, I would do it. How many do you have? You can put in the chat real quick. How many do you have? And then uh, just quantify how much you think that, how long that would take. But I, I definitely would. All right. Uh, um, let's see what else we got here. Um, link to onboard training. You said link to onboard and training. What did you yeah. I think I know what she's talking about. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, do you want, I'm guessing you want the link to the, oh, I can give you the link to the Indeed job description. Oh, okay. 
um, she said onboarding and training that's actually built into the app. So when they, when you add them as a team member, they're going to get the, the training video through that. So that's not something I have to give you a link to. It's just part of the app. How many people can we add as a team member? Um, yeah, with the, great question. With the basic plan, you can add up to three, three team members, three deal finders beside yourself. And with the, uh, the uh, higher plan? Unlimited. Yeah, so the enterprise plan is unlimited, and that gives you unlimited deal finders, so you can really, really scale your business there. The price for the enterprise plan is a hundred. It's one ninety nine a month, though, uh, which, with the unlimited ability to have people adding properties. Just, there's an additional data cost, and there's uh, obviously you just add you can add a lot of people onto the system. Dexter said about one hundred sixty properties. It's a good amount of properties, but um, let, let's let's do this. Everybody right now, because I know we got people all across the country. Everybody right now, do me this favor. Uh, unless you're driving in traffic, <laughs> if you're driving in traffic, keep your eyes on the road. But for right now, everybody put in the chat, someone put in the chat, how much do you think the average, in your market, your average deal makes? What is your average wholesale deal in that market? I know there's a little bit of a delay, but right now just throw that in the chat there for me because I just want to see where we're at across, across 5 to 10K, 6 to 12K, 10K, 6 to 12K, 5 to K. Seven and a half, five to ten, ten to twenty, five to ten, three to twenty. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get you to know. Yeah, um, eight k, five to ten k, five to ten k. Okay, cool, cool. Appreciate that. Um, so, how many? We're we're all businessmen, businesswomen here. If I could trade a thousand dollars, I think the lowest one I saw uh, was like three k. Oh, someone said one to ten k. I'm thinking probably closer to you know, in between there. If I could trade 1000 for $3,000, I'm going to do that every day, all day, uh, as many times as fast as I possibly can do it. And so, excuse me. And so the, the thing is here is um, allowing it just to work, allowing it to uh, do what it has to do. If you guys have ever heard or took any marketing classes, you know that um, it takes about, you know, so a lot of these places say six, seven marketing touches uh, for a sale, a sale to actually consummate. So um, you want to be able to constantly put out your, your, uh, your service. Uh, and so if you're spending, you got 200 properties, you got to mail them at least three times, roughly that's 600 bucks um, plus your, uh, your 49 bucks. Um, you know, you're looking at 650 bucks and you're going to make, three, five, most people are seeing, you can kind of look through the chat yourselves, five to 10 K is that it looks like it's about the average. So to me, it's an, it's, it's a no brainer. It's just, you got to be able to keep going. You got to keep doing it. Yeah. So the bill says 600 a month for six K assignment is 10 times. Exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it's silly. It's silly. So, um, how, how could, so can you walk me through, um, adding because i really want to use utilize adding some of these deal finders um so i'm, I'm actually going to look on my phone here where do i go to do that because i want to i want people to be able to understand that um and really be able to follow through with it so if you guys have the app um uh go ahead and open that up and we can walk through it yep so once you have the app open go to the top left menu button Focus in there. So this top left menu button right here. Yep. And then click team. All right. Team. Okay. And then invite team member is what you want to click. Okay. So on all, and then from here, all we're doing is throwing, sending them um, uh, the email that obviously that team member's email. And then what's the process from there? They're going to get an invitation via email. It's going to say, instructions on how to download the app. Once they do, you'll get an email confirming they joined and they're gonna be able to start adding properties. They'll get a video once they, they install it and open it that says how to use the app, how to add properties. Oh wow, so they're gonna get that video right there. Okay, so now they, we've, they've accepted it, they, so they've accepted the challenge and they're out there and now they find a property. How do I 
I know you kind of spoke, spoke about it, but I just want to make sure everybody understands how do I make sure that they're not just throwing in random properties that, you know, just cause they want to get paid. Right. How do I, how do I ensure that? Yeah. So, um, you basically, first of all, in the video, it's going to ha it's going to kind of overview what they should look for, but then you're going to want to reach out to them directly, probably film a quick video of yourself talking about your business and giving a little bit about how, what types of properties you want them to look for and sending that in an email as soon as you get that confirmation that they join. So that's going to be, it's going to go a long way into making it personal, making them like want to stick around and then do find the properties that you want them to find. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Um, another question for the group, how you guys type one in the chat, how many of you guys have, um, um, Oh man, I forgot the, let me look at my phone because now I can't think. Uh, land glide. So if you guys have land glide, put one in the chat. Um, and the reason why I'm, I'm asking you guys to do this, um, nothing against land glide. I like land glide. I have it here on my phone, right? Um, but really, if you're, um, you know, just, just to be honest, right? This kind of does away with having to have land glide because land glide is good because you can kind of see the stuff, but you can see pretty much everything that you can see with land glide. Um, so we got a lot of people that have ones there. You can see everything that you can pretty much see with, on deal machine that you can with land glide, correct? Right. Yeah. So that's another savings right there. Instead of paying for two pieces of software that do the exact same thing, um, land glide is 10 bucks, save that 10 bucks and you know, you're already spending that, right? So uh, just think about the affordability of it. I, I, I'm not, I'm not here to try to, uh, to sell anybody. I'm just saying this stuff works, man. And this is all about what works. Um, this is all about how do you get deals um, as quickly as possible. Um, get yourself going. So awesome stuff. We got any more other questions? Any other questions? Uh, when I show you, Hey, what's up? What's up? Um, Land glide shows the owner's names in real time as you drive. I, I still use both. All right, still use both. That's that's perfect. If, you, if that's if that's what you uh, want to do, that's cool. Um, so we got a lot of ones. Um, someone said uh, Herbert says, "Does it charge my account when they use it?" I'm assuming they're talking about the deal finders. No, it doesn't charge you any money for deal finders, and they do not get to use and spend any of your money. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Does anybody else have any other credit? Uh, any credits? Any questions? <laughs> any questions? I think we are um, close to a few. Matter of fact, if anybody has like, any questions, we can um, you can take yourself off of mute. Okay, Courtney has a question. Okay, she was saying, "What do you do with failed to find owners?" And so that's that ninety-six percent that I was telling you about. Ninety-six percent of the time, we can find the right owner. And then 3% of the time, 4% of the time we can't. And so that's when it says fail to find owner. Yeah. Uh, but the immediate thing you can do is just go look at your county website and see if that owner is there. Most likely it's not. And that's why we can't find it. But that would be the, uh, the next step that I would take. And if it's not there, I think the next thing is to find a private skip trace person to see if they can track it down for you. Yeah, sure. How often do we send out mail? Uh, once, twice a week. S suggestion every uh, 21 days to every 30 days. Um, is there a place to place an app to see all the properties you have added? Total number. I just see the address and have uh, have to count each one. Is there something like that where it says like a total? No, yeah, and the analytics, the analytics screen shows you. Also, go to the analytics. Go to analytics. Herbert, I see your hand. If you guys have a question and you want to speak real quick, we want to be respectful of this time. Um, but uh, can we get out of this? Uh, do you mind if we get out of this screen here? I can't because I can't stop sharing your screen for you. Yeah. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Uh, where are you at, Herbert? I see you somewhere. I'm right here. All right. A uh, quick question. Uh, when I download the app, it said continue to send mail forever. Do I keep it on that option or do I give it a certain uh, limit? Yeah, it's, it's totally personal preference. And I would say, you know, I, I personally will do it every 21 days for about five or six times. And then 
I'll, I'll lean it back after that and I'll do it less frequently for those properties after they've already received five or six mailers. Perfect. And I'm on the uh, Max deal, so that was still there. So they still have me under Max Maxwell's 30-day uh, challenge. Yeah, so Mac, Max did a 30-day challenge where you guys got the trial for 30 days. If you're already on that, you can still get the $20 credit by using this code. And um, if it doesn't let you input the code, just hit us up in the chat and say you were on this presentation last night. And then our support staff will be able to give you the credits and link you up. Cool. Thanks. Good question, Herbert. All right, uh, Jeteria, what is up? Unmute you real quick. I mean, what's going on? Good, Hi. good, good. Um, I had a quick question. So I know that, like, um, I've seen a couple of properties in my area that had, like, the cold enforcers and stuff like that. And I did um, a people's church on the, um, on the owner, and I wasn't able to get in um, contact with her um, via people search. Um, so my question is with the app, right? Would it automatically, so when, when the mail gets sent out, it will have all the contact information, your contact information in. Um, so would it, would it go to like, if they have like things in code enforcement, code violations, things of that nature? Uh, no, it doesn't give you any code violation info. If you add the property okay. to the app, it tells you who owns it and where they live. Okay, then okay. It'll say a lot of times when it was last sold, how much they sold it for, and that type of stuff. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for your, your, your info. Really appreciate it, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dexter said, will the app remind you? That should be a lot of questions. That's good, man. Uh, <laughs> will the app remind you when it comes to 21 days to reset? It sends out an email, I believe, right? Right, Dave? Um, no, because if you have a deal in there, if you're adding deals every day, you'd basically be getting an email every day that the mail is going out. Yeah. Um, so the way, the way it works is the analytics screen says how many deals are on repeat mail. And then if you open a specific deal, you can see in the activities uh, part of that when the mail is going to go out again. So. Okay. Yusuf has an um, a interesting question. He says, do you have any suggestions on how to orientate the screen for iPhone users as, as I drive things become reversed in the app? Yeah, so on the iPhone, we have location tracking now. So if you press the arrow in the top right, it's going to lock the screen to make sure your car is always in the center of it. But oh, you, can still, you can still always turn the, the map around so it's oriented to how you're facing. And the, um, that little blue dot where you're, that represents you also has like a little arrow on it that shows you the location. So yeah, my suggestion would be just use your finger to, to move the map the way you're facing. And I think that'll help keep things straight. Nice, nice. Uh, we got about two minutes. Uh, Aaron, let me find, you can take yourself off mute. I see you had a question, you got your hand up, a little hand emoji. Where are you at? All right, there you are. Yeah, um, I had a question. Uh, how do I how do I track my my spending? I don't have a problem with it. I just want to know like exactly what you know what I'm spending on because sometimes I'll get like two messages in one day saying that I've spent you know ten dollars here, twenty dollars there, but it, I I haven't figured out a way to just really track it yet. Sorry, I got sidetracked reading this one question. Can you, are you saying, can you repeat the question? Yes, so uh, I, I may be out driving, I'll add like five big properties, but then I'll get like uh, two messages and that I've spent, you know, $10 here or $20 there uh, all in the same day. So I'm just trying to figure out how to be more uh, laser focused with tracking the numbers on how much I'm spending. Okay, yeah, so if you go to the um, analytics screen, it'll say how many deals you have on repeat mail. And so if you've got 300 deals on repeat mail every 30 days, then you'd expect the, the bill to be a total of $300 every 30 days. Does that make sense? Right, okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I got you. All right, cool. Uh, we got a couple more, and um, someone asked, "What is the 
what is uh, the app look like? Um, it's that that blue one right here. All right. She says she want to make sure she downloads the right one. <clears throat> all right. Um, all right. I think that's everything. I don't see any more hands. I think we're done in the chat, and we're right at our time limit. So, uh, once again, man, I appreciate you again, Dave. Thank you so much uh, for hooking everybody up um, with that. That's, that's twenty three bucks. It's my it? My wife. I want everybody to be successful. What's that? I said I want everybody to be successful. Yeah, that's the whole point of this group, man. And there's some people that have gone out there and gotten deals um, in less than 20 tries. Like, we have some people that are that are in this group that have done that. So, um, go out there. You got the free trial and you got free 20 bucks to go ahead and send some postcards out. Let's go out there and work and make it happen. Thanks so much for having me. Cool, man, Dave. Thanks so much. You guys take care. Uh, good night. All right. All right. So, for everybody else, man, we're going to go ahead and um, – wrap this one up um and uh we got a couple of people um i want to just congratulate um uh i don't see them anymore trev and pat trev and pat they got a deal uh on contract and they are killing it they got man they had i think they had like four buyers that came out looking at their property today um so that that's that's definitely awesome um uh, where's Courtney at? I'm, I'm still looking for everybody's faces. I know Courtney, she got on a, uh, got with the seller. I like to also, I don't like just to, 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 to celebrate the, the closings, right? Those are important. But I remember like to get to my first deal, I had to do a lot of, a lot of steps, right? And I had to celebrate a lot of little wins. And so being able to celebrate the wins of getting on an appointment or talking with a, and going into a negotiation to me, I think those are important because most of the time we don't jump straight from learning the system to the closing table. So congratulations to you, Courtney. Um, anybody else that is out here that is, um, oh, Lee Ban. Lee Ban has uh, closed a couple of uh, uh, deals. Like I said earlier today, he's close. I think he's on his third now. Um, so we have a couple of people here. I'm trying to see if anybody else is on the call that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, anybody else you can chime in. But – Let's make sure that we're going out there. We're supporting each other. You guys are uh, doing phenomenal in the Facebook group. I appreciate you guys helping. Some people are asking questions. Some more of the, uh, it's crazy that some of you guys are going to be veterans here, but uh, some of the veterans are stepping up and, uh, and doing it and helping people out. So I'm going to leave this open as always. Uh, as you can see here, we have people coming in here. And we're getting ready to set up stuff. So I'm going to get out of their way. Anybody have any last minute questions for me? Last minute questions for me. I do. All right, cool. Oh, you do? Go ahead. But I, it could be a long question, so I might wait. I don't know if I can text you or something. Nah, girl, nah, nah. You don't get the <laughs> question answered right now. You need to make this okay. money. Okay. Okay, so it, I, have, I found a guy who said that he is um, – he owes taxes and he's behind two years. He has not received any notification that he's going to auction, but he's trying to do the probate. But he was saying that his mom owes medical bills and stuff, and that okay. the, the, a lawyer told him that he couldn't do the probate because of that. Do you know anything about that? The lawyer said he couldn't do the probate because of medical bills on the house? Medical bills that his mom owes. And so he couldn't transfer it. I don't know something like that. I don't. I don't know what he's talking about. So right now we got taxes that are owed, correct? We got a probate issue, and we got medical. This basically liens on the house. Yes. Yes. So as long as it can make through probate, the taxes and the other liens are all going to get taken care of in the sale of the property. Okay. 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 I see what you're saying. So medical it'll, his, the of, medical bills and of, stuff will be paid. But can he can he sell the property if it has? I don't really understand probate, so I don't know. You know, if, so, it, if it's like technically not in his name, or that's that's essentially what it is. That some uh, his mother passed away. She passed away in what they call intestate, which means there was no will. Um, and and um, so the state says, okay, well, who does this property? Who's the who's the next person in line that this property should go to? Okay. And so mm -hmm. courts have to uh, sign, depending on which state you're in. Um, it's okay. She can learn, too. Um, 
<laughs> it's uh the K, the states are going to kind of figure out who is the next heir that this property should go to. And so we're actually dealing with the property just like that actually here in Atlanta. So um, once that's done, then, then that person has all right to sign off on selling that property, but they're still going to be responsible for taking care of those taxes. Now, medical liens, I don't know, because medical liens are typically attached to the individual. Um, so See, not this, to is, the property. this is what I read. I, I, this is what I found online. It said that I don't know why the lawyer would the say house, that. It was saying something about the estate and then saying if the house is inside of her estate, then her medical bills, they can claim it off of her estate and because the house is within the estate because it how wasn't left in. How much are the medical bills? Uh, he said like $15,000. $15,000? Mm -hmm. Upward of $15,000. He really don't know because he said he got to look at her credit and see because he said it's credit card bills and medical bills, but when he went to a lawyer to do the probate, he said the lawyer, once he told the lawyer that it was, um, his mom had debt, he said that he couldn't help him. He said that he could help him? He couldn't help him. He couldn't help him. What kind of lawyer? Okay. A probate so lawyer. One in a row, but I just went through like the probate process too. Uh -huh. So just FYI, um, just because they owe medical bills doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make you pay it for the property, you know? Okay, okay. Because I know, like, when my mom passed away, I, I think she had some medical bills, but they never claimed it on probate. They so we were okay with still having her house. Yeah, and okay. that's what I was saying. Like, medical bills are normally attached to the individual, not... To... Well, I guess what the lawyer was trying to say is, because this guy, he, he basically is saying, I don't have no money. So I can't pay her medical bills, but I, he, he's so dead set on keeping the house. This is, you know, he's still in that mode right now where I, I'm going to keep this house, but he don't got mm. no money. So I don't know what he's thinking, but so, so he's this saying is that, you know, when he's trying to transfer it over to his name to possibly maybe get help with the house or whatever, or, or I think he said insurance and stuff. Um, they said that if she has medical bills, they have to disclose it to the judge. And then they have to contact those debtors and let him know that it's something out there for them to claim from, basically. And then he could possibly lose the house because of that. So he don't, he's kind of caught in between doing that. But I don't even know what he's talking about. So, you know, I didn't really just, I, I Googled something and, and I, like I said, I read about, you know. If, so if I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you exactly what this is. This is exactly what, this is exactly what it is. This is a, he's not even really the homeowner, but this is just, um, someone who thinks they know what they're talking about mm -hmm. um, and they really have no clue he's just saying okay. stuff he's taking bits and pieces of conversations mm -hmm. and just gluing them together to make one conversation and he, he doesn't know what he's talking about okay so, I yeah yeah because yeah, it wasn't, so if, it wasn't so if this is a property this is a property huh? that you think that you can make some decent money off of um this yes, is a, only a, owe six thousand dollars in taxes in an arv in that area okay. at least one well day. let me let me let me let me tell you let me give you you know try to help you out here um so um if this is a property that you think you should make make some money off we're gonna have to do the same thing that we're gonna have to do i'm gonna have to fork over a couple hundred bucks to a closing attorney um so that they can run the title search see what's going on for real so they don't just do a glance over okay also um what state are you in texas texas um do you have uh, a probate attorney that you can speak with I can find one. I don't okay. have one person. Call them up. Ask them what they'll what they'll charge for some what legal research, right? Not like a deep dive, right? Mm -hmm. But legal research. How many? How much they would charge per hour for some legal research so they can take a look at the probate issue? Give you some heads up, and then also combine that with, um, if that checks out, then combine that with um, a, uh, a title company or I don't know what I don't know what um, title Texas company, yeah. title state. Okay. Yeah. Combine that with them. See what they'll charge for that. But you need to, to let you need to first let this guy know. Listen, if we're doing this, then you need to have a contract that you're going to be selling this property. I'm not going to waste my money. And see, he in that mode right now. This is yeah. personal. He's saying I'm I'm not going to lose this house, but I don't have no money to pay it. Okay. And I said, so, are you going to get a job or something? He said, I'm, I'm yeah. stable. I can't do it. I can't pay it. But so I'm so at at, at this point, at that point, you're going to educate and not sell, and you're going to. Put the numbers in front of him. Mm -hmm. Show him with the with the property. Where'd you go? I like looking at people when I talk to them. There you go. 
Um, yeah, I did. I told him that too. I did. I yeah. told him. And then, and then at that point, you're just you're gonna you're gonna back away and say, you know, you know, sir. Unfortunately, I look like. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, I'm not gonna be able to help you out. But I'm gonna touch back. You know, come back with you and yeah. uh, touch back with you later, and just keep, keep with it. But he, eventually, eventually, because he doesn't have any money for the taxes, this, the the county's gonna take it anyway. He's gonna get nothing. Yeah. I guarantee you when it happens. I told him. I said, you know, don't wait till the last minute, you know, thinking that you're going to be able to save the house. Because a lot of people do that and they end up not, you know, walking out with nothing, you know. Got you. He said that before it gets to that point, he will. But one last question. He said he's been, he hasn't paid taxes for two years, but isn't it two years when they start taking the house? It all depends. It's crazy. Because there's some places that they haven't owed taxes in decades. They still haven't taken oh. it. Right? Okay. 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 So, well, thank right. you. No problem. No problem. All right. I got, got you. Shateria, what's going on? Lower your hand there. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. You can hear me? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Oh, okay. So I have a quick question. So I had, remember I told you I had an appointment um, like two days, a day ago. So the, the seller, he was telling me that he was, I know that he motivated. I, well, he got two motivations. So he got one of the motivations is that he want to move out because the kids moved out and the kids grown. And another one, he said something that he had like a balloon mortgage payment, uh, something, a balloon type of mortgage payment. Okay. And so my question, my first question is, what, what does your follow-up schedule look like? Um, you know, because I did rebuttal him with, you know, telling him the reasons why he should go ahead and go forward with selling the house. Mind you, this house is worth $1.9 million. Um, so he was like, he, his, his, his objective towards me was, oh, he don't have to sell the house fast like he thought he did because the mortgage company gave him additional time to make the balloon payment, blah, blah, blah. blah. So one, how does your follow-up schedule look like? Like, what, does your, what do you use? Like, are you doing it on a weekly basis or do you recommend every two weeks? Or, you know, okay. how does your follow-up schedule schedule like so number one uh just to get the definition right so a balloon payment right basically mm-hmm. what that mortgage company says whatever the balance is of that mortgage he's going to pay mm-hmm. all he's going to pay all that at a set date so you said he's old 1.9 it's worth 1.1 1. 1, which whatever you said it was right 1.9 yeah 1.9 yeah. 1. million so let's just say let's just say i don't know let's say he's been in it for a while and he owes a million dollars left mm-hmm. right Whenever that date expires, whenever that is, if it's June 1st, all $1 million needs to be transferred over to the mortgage company. It's a balloon payment, right? It's like okay, you pay off a little bit, pay off a little bit until a certain point, and then wherever that date is, whatever the balance is, all that needs to be settled all at once. Okay. So it's a good pressure point because if he don't got that money, guess what? He just paid a whole bunch of money for a couple of years and now he gets nothing they, they take the house back right okay so, so that's that and as far as um reaching out i'm getting i'm getting sand man i'm getting i'm about to get, i'm about to sand man because you walking back and trying to focus on um so um he uh so as far as follow-up if you're already in contact with this person i do one one two two and then every month so okay. once, a week, once a week, once a week, then every two weeks, every two weeks, and then once a month. Okay, okay, that's what you're saying. And because he was telling me all this motivation that he had and stuff like that, so I was telling him, like, you know, he he, re- he was rebuttaling me or whatever. Um, so I, I'm going to just try to continue to follow up. I'm going to follow up with him because I know that he is motivated to sell. He got two motivations. Um, but he said that the payment due on April the 15th. So I was like, why don't you just, Go ahead and April sell the 15th. house now. Yeah. You must be hoping on that lotto money. <laughs> that lottery money. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to continue to follow up. Thank you, Tommy. Are uh, you going to We Live, right? I am going to We Live. And, and, and okay. everybody else, um, if you're going to We Live, let me know. For sure, I'd love to see you guys out there. Um, Dave, you going to We Live? Uh, Dave, Dave said he might go to. So. Um, this, that's right. You already said you couldn't go. Anyway, okay. all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm get up out of here. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank I'm gonna leave the chat open so you guys can uh, talk amongst yourself and uh, go from there. All right. Let me stop recording.